Welcome to the Exam Study Expert Podcast, helping you ace your exams at school and university through the psychology of high performance and the science of studying smarter, not harder. It's my pleasure to introduce your host, the Cambridge-trained memory psychologist and exam success coach, William Wadsworth. Hello and welcome to the Exam Study Expert podcast. In today's short episode, I'm going to be talking to you about the seven core types of flashcard and the best times to use them. Some of them may be familiar, uh, others may be new ideas, and you can pick and choose your favourites depending on the nature of the challenge you've got in front of you. So, um, before we dive straight in, a quick bit of context on flashcards. Uh, As regular listeners may know, they happen to be my personal favourite way of studying, uh, but they're not the only good way to study. If you've got stuff to learn and you want to get things to stick in your memory, I think there are two other main good methods uh, uh, other than flashcards, and I talk about these in episode 119, Effective Learning. There are only three good methods. To save you the trouble of going just to that episode just to find out what those other two methods are. The other two are uh, past papers and practice questions and blank page retrieval, uh, which is otherwise known as blurting or brain dumps. And if you want to go uh, and find out a little bit more about those other methods and when to use them, episode 119 is the place to go. Um, But for today, I really want to focus on flashcards. Now, the, the, the main reason you would use flashcards other than the other two methods is when you have a lot of detailed, content heavy uh, material to learn for your tests or exams. So there's just a, you know, a a huge amount of uh, detail, facts, figures, uh, definitions, vocabulary, you know, a lot of stuff you need to get to stick in your memory. Uh, A lot of things you're expected to know. Flashcards, I think, are the most effective way to build that kind of foundation of knowledge uh, for your your exam that has a lot of things that you need to know. So I said today is going to be all about the seven main ways of doing flashcards. And you may think, well, seven ways? What's that all about? Um, Let me break it down. So um, I'm going to kind of group the the seven ways into three main uh, families, if you like. So the first family are the uh, main paper-based variants. So when you're doing pen and paper, good old, old, old school style. The, the first one in this category is my favourite, um, my personal favourite, and that's just good old paper flashcards. Taking small pieces of paper, you've got a question on the front, an answer on the back, uh, and then you go through and test yourself by looking at those questions on the front and trying to remember that answer that's written on the back. Either just remembering it out loud or in your head or perhaps scribbling the answer that you think is right on a piece of rough paper, particularly if it's quite a long answer. That's often quite a good idea. So paper flashcards are an excellent all-purpose option. You cannot go wrong with paper flashcards. Uh, They work really, really nicely. And of the uh, coaching clients I work with who take exams that I consider to be very, very uh, large, very, very substantial knowledge challenges. So there's there's a lot of things, there's an awful lot of things they need to know, a huge amount of detail. Probably about 50% of clients uh, I work with taking, uh, taking those kinds of exams use paper flashcards. The second variant is what I call smart notes. Uh, So this is a really nice one if you are used to making a lot of notes in your uh, studying. Smart notes are very, very similar to flashcards in terms of the the, the sorts of things you'd write. It's just really about how you lay it out. Uh, And it's a slightly easier shift for someone, I I often find, who is used to making a lot of notes. So what are smart notes? It's when you take, um, you know, larger pieces of paper, so maybe A4 or or kind of a, a notebook or journal or something, and rather than kind of writing your notes as you're perhaps used to doing now, the f- using the full width of the page to write out all those details, you draw a line down the middle of the page, perhaps about one third into the page, and then the detail you want to capture, each key point you want to capture, you write it in the right-hand side, that right-hand column, and then next door to it, in the left-hand column, you write some kind of cue or question. Um, and what that allows you to do is then test yourself on your notes. So you just come along later, cover up that right-hand side, 
read down the questions and test yourself on those questions. It's a really nice way to upgrade your note making uh, because it allows for that all important retrieval practice, the testing on the, uh, the, the questions later. Otherwise, what else are you going to do with your notes? Well, you probably just read them back through. You know, that's not going to be particularly helpful for getting it to stick. We want to be testing ourselves, pulling those key details out of memory. And if we lay it out to smart notes, it allows us to do that. Okay, so we've got the two paper variants. We've got the, the, the traditional paper flashcards, uh, writing questions and answers, two sides of a small bit of paper. Then you've got the smart notes using those two columns, questions in the left-hand side, out corresponding answers in the right-hand side. The next family are the digital variants. And there are two of these, and they are the kind of digital versions of each of those two ideas we've talked about already. So there's a digital version of flashcards. Um, so quiz apps like Quizlet or Anki or Brainscape. Another really popular, excellent, all-purpose option uh, if you've got a lot to uh, memorise for your exam. I mentioned earlier about 50% of my clients who are taking like really, really knowledge-heavy exams use paper flashcards. The other 50% use quiz apps. So I mentioned the most popular ones a moment ago, Quizlet, Anki, Brainscape. Uh, there are lots of others. Those tend to be the three most common ones. We have quite detailed uh, video walkthroughs available on how to get the most out of each of those uh, tools as part of the Total Memory Mastery course we have available in the Study Smarter Network. Uh, head to examstudyexpert.com forward slash network to find out more about that. Uh, effectively, the, the, the Netflix of study strategy. And it's a class library of lots of interesting things to, to, to help you study smarter in your exams, including, as I say, our our kind of deep dive walkthroughs on exactly how to get the most out of these different uh, quiz apps. So why would you go paper flashcards over digital flashcards? And um, again, this was something I've talked about earlier in the year. So uh, just to sort of summarise my, my thoughts on this, I think both can be fabulous options. I, I see people getting fantastic results with paper flashcards and digital flashcards, the, the quiz apps. Um, some of the main pros and cons, uh, quiz apps allow you to often just just use ready-made cards. So maybe some cards that have been made by a peer or, or perhaps kind of ready-made for your course if you're taking quite a, quite a mainstream public exam. The disadvantage of quiz apps is that you are more susceptible to distraction in the digital world. So personally, paper flashcards was always the way I liked. I also like the flexibility. You know, I could put anything on the back of a flashcard, paper flashcard. I could put a little diagram. I could put a little figure. I could, you know, go over the first letters of the keywords in a different colour just to make, sort of make them really stand out. Like, there's lots of different things you can do on the back of a card, whereas you're kind of a little bit more restricted uh, with a quiz app. And, and sure, a lot of them have functionality to kind of put pictures in and things, but it just takes a bit more work, I think, than just, just writing it out uh, by hand. Anyway, quiz apps are still a very, very popular option, uh, work fantastically for for many, many people. I uh, highly recommend that as an option as well. The second digital variant is the digital equivalent of smart notes. So I talked about smart notes a moment ago at the paper version where you uh, have a piece of paper, put the line down the middle, put your questions in the left-hand column, answers in the right-hand column. Well, we can do exactly the same thing digitally as well. So in a piece of software like Word or Excel, again, taking two columns, making a table with two columns, questions go in the left-hand column, answers go in the right-hand column. Very similar idea to the smart notes. And this one tends to be an especially good one if you have to make notes in a lecture or class. You get in the habit of kind of taking your notes in that table format, putting the detail, perhaps you just capture that right-hand column while you're sitting there in the lecture, capture all those details in the in the kind of right-hand column, and then you can come back later and, and fill in little question or keywords in the in that left-hand column. Uh, it's a really nice way to, to kind of capture material from lectures and classes, again, because it's allowing you to do the testing, the all-important retrieval practice on that material later. So we've captured four main ways so far. We've done two paper variants and the equivalent two digital variants. So we've got paper flashcards uh, and the digital equivalent of that, the quiz apps. Uh, and then we've got smart notes uh, as well as the digital version of that, smart notes. Exactly the same, but done in, in Word, for example. My final three options are what I consider the, the family of more creative options. So we've got three uh, other ideas for you, uh, and these might be a little bit uh, more unusual. Uh, you might not have thought of doing it like this. So the first one in this family is what I call audio flashcards. So 
Audio flashcards is a particularly good option for you if you either don't like writing uh, or you have perhaps dyslexia would be a good example where, you know, you want to uh, sort of try and re reduce the amount of time you spend reading and writing uh, because that sort of takes you more time as, as a result of having your dys dyslexia. Um, the one little footnote I'd give to this is if you ultimately need to be able to uh, read and write read the questions and write the answers in the exam, it's important to have at least some practice of that as part of your studying. Uh, don't leave practicing <laughs> reading questions and writing your answers um, till the exam because, you know, that's that's going to cause you some problems. Uh, so, you know, we did, do need to practice on that as part of your your, your studies as well. Um, but audio flashcards, you know, could be a good way for you if you've just got a lot of things you want to, to test yourself on. Um, audio flashcards are also a good option if you have a lot of listening time available as part of your day-to-day -day routine. So maybe you have uh, a, a commute in the car or on the train or bus uh, to and from school or, or work or, or wherever you, uh, you, you're spending your days. Um, and, you know, it's hard to use that time for reading, for example, um, but it is possible to, to plug your headphones in and, and listen to something. Uh, if that's the case for you, uh, or maybe, you know, you, you're walking along, you know, it's, you can't really read things as you're walking along, um, but, uh, you, you know, you could certainly plug in your headphones and, and listen. Uh, so if you have a lot of that kind of time, audio flashcards could be a good way to, to, to use that time and make the most of it. So what is an audio flashcard? Well, you uh, are effectively trying to replicate what you do in a standard paper or digital flashcard, but in spoken word. So you would read uh, a little question or cue word, pause for 10 seconds perhaps, and then read the corresponding answer. So you might need to write yourself a little bit of a script for this. Uh, maybe you need to write it out uh, in, in paper format first and then kind of record it, perhaps using the, the voice notes app on your on your phone or, or, or whatever. Um, and then the idea is that when you listen to your audio flashcards back, when you're listening back, you hear the question or the cue word, you try and speak in, speak out loud the uh, corresponding answer in that silence that you've left, that sort of 10, 20 second silence. Uh, and then you will hear the answer being spoken out, uh, being read out in, in your recording. And, and you can kind of cross to check that against what you've just said uh, and check that you've got it right. And if you haven't got it right, or you misremembered it, or you couldn't remember it at all, uh, then you'll hear the right answer and that will help it to to stick for you. Uh, so the idea is, you know, the, if I, the, the reason I sort of suggest leaving that, that 10, 20 second gap is so that you don't have to keep pausing and start, you know, restarting again uh, makes it much easier if you can just play it continuously uh, and have the silences built in for you. Uh, then you don't have to faff around with <laughs> keeping starting and stopping uh, the, the the recording. Makes it a little bit easier to listen back to and effectively to test yourself on your audio flashcards. Um, the second creative option is lift the flap. So a common bit of advice I see for um, studying is putting sticky notes up around the bathroom mirror. Uh, now, I suggest going a step further than this because, you know, what we're aiming to do if to be effective learners is not just uh, sort of look at material, but we want to be testing ourselves on it, pulling it out of memory. That's the foundations of effective learning. That's the retrieval practice. Um, so what we can do with those sticky notes, what I suggest doing is write your question or your, write a little question or cue on the front of your sticky note and then you've got to kind of do it upside down. So when you lift the flap up, it reads the right way around. But then you write your answer kind of upside down, if you like, on the back of the sticky note, um, such that when you kind of, you can kind of turn it into like a lift the flap thing. Uh, so you lift it up uh, and you can see the answer there. So what that then allows you to do uh, while you're, you know, if you put them up around the bathroom mirror, you know, while you're brushing your teeth or, you know, if you've put them up around the kettle, uh, you know, while you're making a cup of tea or whatever, um, you can then look at your little cues or your questions, try and remember the answer in your head, speak it out loud, whatever, and then you can lift up that flap to see if you're right. So rather than just looking passively at that, that those really important bits of information, you can actually be actively testing yourself on those really bits, important bits of information. Uh, you know, multiple times, you know, multiple times every single week as you're brushing your teeth, making your cup of tea, you know, wherever you've decided to to put these things. Uh, so that can be a really nice little tip. Um, another version of lift the flap is putting sticky notes in your textbook itself. So I know some people that turn their textbook uh, into flashcards effectively by putting sticky notes over key bits of information, key bits of a table, key bits of a diagram. 
that then allows you to, you know, it saves you sort of the trouble of writing out your own cards. Uh, you can just come along uh, and open up the page of that textbook and you've got all these kind of little lift flap things and you've written some kind of question or cue perhaps on the front of the of, of, of each little sticky that you've stuck on it. And then you've got to remember what's underneath. And then uh, you can lift up the flap to see if you're right. Uh, and if not, it'll help uh, you, you kind of remember uh, what's underneath. My final creative option for you is over to you, really. Get creative. So you've kind of seen the pattern, what you were trying to do with flashcards. And, you know, really what I hope if I've done in this episode, if nothing else, is kind of expanded what you might think of a flashcard as being. Like, for me, a flashcard is a pretty, um, you know, pretty kind of expansive term that, that kind of covers any variant where you've kind of got some kind of question or cue you, when you play it back or listen to it back or read it back, you have to try and remember what the answer is. And then you get to either see or hear the corresponding right answer afterwards. And, and like we've talked about lots of different ways we can lay these out. We can, we can record them in audio format. We can lay them out in two columns in a piece of paper or in a Word doc. Uh, we can lay, the, lay them out in front or back of a small bit of paper in traditional flashcards or front or back of a little yellow sticky note if we want to put them up around a bathroom mirror or by the kettle. Loads of different places we can put these little questions and answers. So my, my kind of final one is, is over to you to have a think about, you know, where else could you put these questions and answers? Is there any, any other format that could work well for you? Uh, so one I came across quite recently was using the sort of like jumbo size lolly sticks. Um, so, you know, you'd put the question on one side, write the question in a, you know, in a pen on, on in a biro on one side of these lolly sticks, uh, and then you put the corresponding answer on the back. And then, you know, they, they, you kind of put them all in a big jar uh, and, and you kind of pull these sticks out at random uh, and, and kind of quiz yourself on them. And, uh, you know, that this was a... Um, uh, a set of SEND, which stands for Special Educational Needs and Disabilities Coordinator, uh, who was talking to me about this. And, you know, she said it was a really nice way that some of her her students that, that she supports uh, like to like to do their learning. And they find that kind of extra, you know, tactility is kind of quite nice for them. So, you know, there's a couple of examples there maybe we've had so far, the sort of the lolly sticks and the audio flashcards that, uh, you know, maybe if kind of some of the more traditional options like the paper flashcards or the digital flashcards, for whatever reason, that's not kind of quite a fit for, for you. You know, maybe it's to have a think about, you know, maybe the audio flashcards, maybe it's the lolly sticks, maybe it's something else, you know, what is going to be the version that suits you and your needs best? So I hope this has been an interesting exploration of all the different flashcards options out there. Uh, one more time, we've got the paper flashcards, the smart notes, the digital versions of those, so the quiz app, the digital smart notes in Word. And then finally, we've got the audio flashcards, lift the flap sticky notes around the mirror, or maybe even directly in your textbook. And then getting creative with any other place you can write those questions and answer pairs, lolly sticks, for example. Thank you so much, as always, for listening today. I've really enjoyed talking up to you about these options. Thank you for tuning in, as always. Um, if you do have any questions about your flashcard technique, what's going to be best for you, how to use it, the doors are always open to work with me as your uh, study strategy coach. Head to examstudyexperts.com forward slash coaching. Uh, or if you are a school and want me to come and talk to your students about these sorts of things, uh, find out more about what I can offer there at examstudyexpert.com forward slash workshops. Thanks again for listening. Uh, lovely to have your company as always. And I just want to finish by wishing you every success in your studies. If you've got exams coming up, you can now get all of William's favourite tips and tricks to save you time and get you higher grades all in one handy cheat sheet. Grab your copy at examstudyexpert.com slash free tips. Thanks again for listening and see you soon.